Right, Dave, we talked earlier about how different knots affect different strengths on different materials. I believe you've got an example for us. Yeah, very simply, all different lines are made from different materials and products. And if you tie the wrong type of knot, it can be disaster. Uh, this is 15 pound multi-strand. There's 60 fibres in it that break at four ounces. And I've tied a four turn tuck blood knot. And this should break at 15 pounds. That wasn't 15 pounds, was it? No. <laughs> you, a lot of people think the line snapped, but it didn't snap, Joe. What the line has done, if we look at this, you can see here, the line's actually cut itself on itself, there's the break. Yep. It's a strangulation knot with braided lines. The four-turn blood knot can be used very, very successfully with fluorocarbon, it's a different material. But that's an example of using the wrong knot with the wrong line and it's going to cost you fish. Okay, so what knot would you be using with that material? Right, well, the braided lines, there's two types of knots, let's put that out of the way. Uh, one that's used uh, it was used by Richard Walker. Uh, it's called the Grinner Knot. Uh, quite a few people know this, but there's two ways of tying it. There's an easy way and a difficult, not difficult, but normal way. There's the eye of the hook. And we've got some rope here as well to tie it. So the Grinner Knot, uh, it reduces strangulation because the turns go over two pieces of line as opposed to the single piece of line with a blood knot. And what you do, take your leading line, drop a loop and make four turns inside that loop over that doubled section of line. And as you draw this slowly together, you'll see all the turns. And what I always do just to help the line is assist it with my fingers as I'm, as I'm drawing it together. And you'll see there's the perfect knot. And if we tied this with multi-strand, that would give us 16, 17 pounds. So that is the, uh, that's the um, standard uh, normal way of tying uh, a grinner. And we'll show you a simple way because some people do have difficulty with knots. So once more, pass the line through as we did before. But this time, what we're going to do is not drop the loop and make the turns. We're going to make the turns over the main line, just like a blood knot. And I can put four turns in, I can put 50 turns in, because all these turns are simply holding that doubled line together for me. So we'll drop the loop now, we'll make our standard four turns, and as we close the knot, you'll see all of those turns that we put in They'll all come out, and there's your grinner, exactly the same. So what's the idea of the turns then? The turns are going over doubled line, that's reducing the strangulation. But then they don't they twist out of it afterwards? <laughs> yes, that's, uh, sorry, uh, I didn't make that clear. What's happening is, all those turns that we put in, and you can put 100 if, if you wish so, um, as you're drawing that knot close, uh, close to the hook, all of those turns travel through and come out. So you've got exactly the same grinner knot, but two ways of tying it. Right, Dave, we all use loops for our fishing for various things. I do myself, I put them on the end of my hook links a lot of the time when I'm clipping my rigs on and off. I use them to attach little wing swivels, you know, and using sort of hinge stiff rigs, etc. Yeah. Quite often use the figure of eight loop knot. Yeah. Haven't really had any problems with it in the past, apart from once, but we won't go into that. <laughs> I believe you've got a much stronger knot for the job. Yeah, uh, this is particularly suited to fluorocarbon. Uh, this knot's got no name, by the way. It's one I devised from an existing knot that was far more complicated. Take your fluorocarbon and drop it and form a single granny knot. Okay. You'll notice, Joe, the lines coming from the back out of the front. Yep. At this point, if you want any attachments, swivels, etc., attach them onto this leading line because this is going to this is going to be your loop this what? section here not that one so if the line comes from the back out to the front and all we do attach whatever you want at this point and then pass the leading line from the back 
through the front two times. And what you're left with is almost like a, a box shape. Okay. Now, by holding both the tag end and the leading line, we close it down. And when you get to this point, you decide what size loop you want. So all you simply do is once it's partly closed down, take hold of your tag end and just slowly draw it down to the, whatever size loop you want. Because on certain rigs, you might want a larger loop. On certain materials, you might want a larger loop. Sometimes you may want a tiny loop. So once we've got to this point there and we're happy with that size loop, take both tag end and leading line and pull them as hard as you can to close it down. And then finally, just to ensure everything's in place, take your tag end and make a half hitch or a granny knot simply through it and draw them both together. And what you're left with every time is a perfect shaped loop with no strangulation. I like that. Pretty easy to tie as well. Mm. I'll definitely be having a little play around with that one. Any particular um, materials that it works better with or that you shouldn't be using it with? I use it because I use fluorocarbon a lot and some knots. Uh, you know how we've just seen how the multi-strand does not like a blood knot, but it loves uh, a grinner knot with fluorocarbon, it's the opposite. It loves a four-turn blood knot and uh, it hates a grinner knot. So this loop here, because lots of anglers use stiff rigs, things like that, it's a perfect loop for the job. Superb.